Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and for today's tutorial, I have picked everybody's least favorite virus to use as our subject. Uh, so yeah, that's the coronavirus, and all those little red spikies out there are uh, the little attachment proteins, I guess, but you'll notice they're all red. And so if we want to get random color variations on those guys, often we'll use a replicator, right? But in this case, we don't have a replicator in the scene. We just have two mesh objects. We have the sphere here, and we have these guys. And these guys, these little spikies, are consisting of multiple what are called mesh parts or polygon parts or polygon islands. Now, oftentimes when you talk about parts in Moto, you're talking about the um, selection set, right? So you go over to stats, and you have different sorts of, uh, you know, selection sets in uh, Moto. We've got parts, we've got um, polygon selection sets, and we've got material selection sets. They're just tags, they're called p-tags in Moto, where you can grab a bunch of points or edges or polygons and, and tag it with a name, and it's sort of a group. In this case, when we're talking about parts, we're talking about these individual sort of groups of connected polygons within one large mesh, right? I'll just isolate it here. So this has um, a bunch of different parts, right? And we're going to use that nomenclature parts uh, with a falloff operator to be able to assign different weights to each part and then use that in the octane shading graph to get the same effect we would with the variation texture in the uh, Moto shader tree. So if you're rendering in Moto, it's really easy to get different colors in all these things because Moto comes with this awesome layer called the variation texture here. I'm just looking at properties here. The variation texture allows you to, you know, create a gradient of colors and you can just, you know, whatever, pick it here and run that gradient and, and pick a random color from that gradient and apply it to replicas for, that are, you know, one, replica on each particle. So you're using the particle ID, uh, which is normalized between zero and one, and you're using that particle ID to, you know, match a place on this graph between zero and one, or 100%. And it'll match up uh, that particle ID with that particular color, and it'll give it to that replica on that particle ID. Now it'll also work with texture particles and items. So each item can have an item ID, or each item actually in Moto has its own particle ID. And so you can use it with a group of items as well. So it's super powerful. And you can use it with a mesh part, which in this case, each of these parts has its own ID. So this would be like ID, you know, 0.1 and 0.2 and 0.3. You know, again, normalized between 0 and 1. Uh, unfortunately, in Octane, there's no direct way to do that. But our friend Funk over on the uh, Octane and Moto um, uh, Slack group, and I think he posted in the Octane forum as well, uh, and Funk is also the guy I go to with all of my Octane questions, so he's he's very much an Octane expert. I came up with this cool little schematic way of doing this. So it involves using a set weight texture. So here I've got my um, all these little parts here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, this item right here, and I'm going to pop open my uh, mesh operations list. I'm just going to scooch this down a little bit. And I'm going to add a set weight mesh operator. So this is in Moto 14 on, we have the set weight, so set weight operator. And what that'll do is allow us to create a weight map. We'll just call this, um, we'll just call it spikies, or spikes or spikies, is that spikes? We'll just call it spikes. And then you can actually see that over here in the vertex map list now. So there's spikes, and if I go to vertex map, you can see it just gives it a default value of one. 100%. So, you know, there we have it. Now, what we want to do is create a little schematic to um, apply a slightly different weight map to each of these polygon parts. So we're going to do that with a fall off operator. So this is a model, by the way, from Sketchfab. I should uh, credit it, actually. Give me one second and, and let me find the guy who. This was done by somebody named Teleri in Moscow. So, Teleri, you are probably not watching this. <laughs> but thanks for the coronavirus model right there that I'm using for this uh, little thingy, this little tutorial. So let me pop open my schematic down here and bring in my uh, model down here and double click on the little yellow diamond. And so there's my set weight mesh operation I'd added in the, in the mop um, stack here. And one thing you wanna do is just make sure the selection type is set to polygon. It probably defaulted to vertex. We wanna set that to polygon because we're gonna be setting this on a per sort of polygon island basis. And then I am going to add a fall off operator. So I'll just type that in here, fall off operator. 
these are super useful. A fall off operator will essentially um, analyze different aspects of the mesh. And so in this case, if you look at channels, we can analyze all kinds of stuff like the particle ID or different positions or normal uh, directions, point index, point part, um, polygon area, polygon flatness, polygon point count, and we're gonna use polygon part here. So but I could do things like just, you know, you know, add weights to all polygons with five vertices or something like that. So these are really, uh, these operators are really powerful. I'm actually gonna drag this polygon part channel into the schematic here. And then I'm going to do this very moto thing where I right click and I separate the channel and that just lets me pull it off to the side. So it's still the same node, you see it right here, the same item. Um, but it just lets me deal with it visually a little better because I'm going to eventually feed it into itself. I'm going to feed these polygon parts into the weight of the fall off, right? And so what moto will do is it'll, it'll just iterate through all of these parts. So here's, this, say there's 100 parts, then this will be like 0.1 and 0.2 and 0.3 and 0.4. So these part numbers are you know, normalized between zero and one. And what I wanna do is randomize um, the weight value for each one. So I'm going to add a random node here and it's, it's just from a channel modifier. So I'm gonna type in random and I wanna use the random node from the uh, channel modifier list here. So drag that in here. So it says random. And on the random node, I want to do a couple of things. One, let's... Um, untick use time as seed so definitely untick that because the seed and i'm just going to drag it in here right off the uh, uh properties panel so you can drag from the channels here you can drag seed in from the channels or you could just drag it right off the properties panel here which is pretty cool i'm actually going to pump the polygon part into the seed and what that's going to do is it's going to give a slightly different um, number for each polygon part and then i'm going to output that and it's again normalized between zero and one because that's what we want our weight to be between zero and one. I'm gonna pump that into weight. And if I select my spiky weight here, you'll see I've got you know different all kinds of different colors there. Whereas if I didn't have this plugged in, it's it's all gonna be one. It's gonna be 100 percent So if I plug that in, now I'm randomizing each polygon part. So it's iterate, iterating between each one of these guys. And it's giving it, you know, feeding that into the seed. And so we get a different seed number for each part and it outputs a different number for each part. Now you can also, if you just, if you want to just manipulate it a little bit more, I can add a node in between these two. I can add like a math node. We'll just add like a multiply node. So basic math multiply and bring that in there. And here we can just add whatever number we want. So here you, you see it changed everything because I turned it to zero, which you don't want to do, but... If I turn it to like um, 15 or something, you'll see that, you know, it's multiplying that uh, by all the values there. It's it's getting out of uh, the polygon parts. And I can also like animate that, right? So let's we'll say I, I don't really like this one set up. So you may use this for like you know, rocks or something like that. And like, let's we'll say I don't like that value I'm getting there. I can just, you know, I'm just gonna channel haul this by pressing um, C. I could just drag through this and give it a different multiplier number and it's going to change. You see these sort of flashing and changing up here. It's just going to change the weight distribution as well. It just changes the seed number and gives different random weights to it. It's just a nice little control if you want to put it in there. But that's all we really need to do on the, um, on the moto side in the schematic. And we'll just use this in the octane um, graph to give us some random variation between each of these polygon parts. And so I'm actually going to go to my shader tree here and under spikes, I've got my octane graph there at the top. And now what it did on here, and, and there's there's some layered tutorial octane or layered octane material tutorials on uh, Pixel Fondo, you could just search for them, but I've got a sort of a subsurface scattering diffuse material feeding into a layered material. I also have a, a sheen layer on there. But because I'm doing subsurface scattering, and in fact, my diffuse value is just zero. There's no diffuse values on this at all. Right now, I've got, you know, I want to make sure your transmission is set, you know, to something like white or close to white. I'm using a little bit of pink here. And for the median, I'm using the new um, Octane Random Walk Median. You can find it over here under median. The uh, scatter, it's the uh, random walk median. So that's the new sort of subsur subsurface scattering med median we're using in, in the newer versions of Octane or Octane 2020. It might be in 2019 as well. And here, this red color is going to Albedo, and that's why that's how we're getting this red color on these spikes. And so what I want to do is, is I'm just going to fire up Octane here. 
and I'm going to unhook the red and I'm going to instead plug in a new texture and I'm going to do a gradient two. And this gives us a sort of moto style gradient that I can edit. So I'm just gonna go to gradient two and middle click for a key. And at 100%, I'm gonna go sort of a bright red and at 0%, maybe a sort of an orange and 50% and in here. Yeah, we'll just do an orange, maybe orangish. And then 50%, uh, I'm gonna do like a kind of a dark red like that, okay? And you see it hasn't done anything quite yet, but let's um, change our input to our gradient to our weights. So again, it's just going to map these colors, much like the variation texture, it's gonna map these colors to the weights. So a weight of one, these sort of brighter red ones will get more towards the red, while the sort of greener ones with a weight of zero will be more towards orange. And I'm going to do that with the octane, let me just select the input here so it'll automatically connect it, go to textures, I just want a grayscale vertex attribute. And if you remember, that was called spikes, like that. And so I type it in and boom, Octane changes. Now it's calculating, um, you know, a different random color or not, it's not a random color. It's, it's, it's uh, it, you know, it's a, it's a color on the gradient I created and the color is matched to the value of the weight. And so there you go. And uh, that's it. And be on the lookout for that virus. <laughs> Okay, hope that's useful to all you Octane users. Thank you, uh, Funk, for um, uh, this cool idea. Yum, yum!